Hello. Now, now, it's been a while since I last donned the lab coat, but I thought it only appropriate with the latest creation making its way to Summoner's Rift to rework for the Scorpion King himself, Skarner. Now, over the last few weeks, I have been testing a myriad of different builds on the PBE, mostly so you don't have to. I have found a lot of different and fun ways that you could play Skarner, but I've also found the way, honestly, you should be playing Skarner. Now, if you don't know, I like to test the limits of each champion League of Legends to the fullest, which involves some of the craziest builds you could possibly think of. I'm not gonna go into the exact scalings, just because you know nerfs and buffs will be coming soon, and I wanna future-proof this video. I know it won't be perfect since there will be something that normally wouldn't get changed that one day will be, but I digress. So let's start with a new passive, Threads of Vibration. Whenever Skarner auto-attacks with or without Shattered Earth, the Q, hits an enemy with Upheaval, the second part of the Q, or lands Impale, the ultimate, Skarner applies a stack of Quaking that lasts for four seconds. It will stack up to three times and the timer resets with each hit. At three stacks of Quaking, the afflicted enemy will take magic damage equal to a percentage of their maximum health over the four second duration. This damage is capped against monsters at the time of this recording. Next, this is Q, and it's a two-parter. Oh, I got a big rock. Here we go. First part is Shattered Earth. Skarner picks up a rock. After he gets the rock, he can auto-attack three times while holding it. He also gains a bit of extra range, grants additional attack speed, and deals bonus physical damage to the target and all surrounding enemies. On the third attack, Skarner will slam down the rock onto the target, dealing maximum health damage as well as additional physical damage and slowing them. Now time for part two, Upheaval. Any time before the third auto attack, Skarner can recast Q in order to throw the rock as a skill shot. If it hits a target, it will explode, dealing physical damage and slowing all enemies close to the target it hits. Now, onto his W, Seismic Bastion. When activated, Skarner will cast the ability, and upon completing, Skarner will shield himself equal to a percentage of his maximum health for a few seconds. It also releases a shockwave around him that does magic damage while also slowing each enemy hit. His E is called Ixtil's Impact. Man, they really had to add a lot to this one. Passing this, Skarner begins to charge, where he can't be slowed while he is charging. From what I have seen, it is a timer scaling and gains movement speed while it is channeling. I ran a couple additional tests, and it actually seems that regardless of your movement speed, even if you get a lot more, it will still go the exact same distance as the normal Excel's impact. If you were to collide with a wall or terrain, you'll go through it. If you collide with an enemy or large monster, you'll grab them and continue to charge. If you're holding someone right to the wall, you'll stop the charge and stun the target while dealing physical damage to them. It also reduces the cooldown of Ixel's impact a bit. The movement speed controls a little bit like Rift Herald or Battle Slayer or Neuter Solo, just so you know. Also, you can be stunned and rooted while it is channeling, and it will cancel the ability and put it on cooldown. So be careful with that. Lastly, his ultimate. It's still Impale, but a lot better than before, and a lot harder to use. Instead of being a point and click like before, it now has a cast time that's pretty long and pretty easy to dodge. While casting it, you can't move either, so self-rooted. However, if you land it, it will suppress the closest three enemies and let you move them. It will also damage the three enemies with magic damage that scales with AP. Skarner also gets to move faster for a bit while he has the enemies impaled. Now that we know some of the different abilities, why don't we pivot over to the different styles, both roles and builds that I tested out. Let's start with the shoulds before we go over the coulds. Chalkboard, chalkboard. Here comes the Skarner. I tested out four of the five different rules. Yes, four. I just didn't do ADC, but I theorized that you could do a, if you go Senna and Skarner with a farming Skarner. I just didn't get the chance to do that. Anyways, back to the proper rules. Jungle is the most obvious one, since that was the primary role of Old Skarner. His clear speed is pretty good, and his ganks remind me a lot of Zac when using Slingshot. Lots of creative angles, but keep in mind that when you use Ixtel's impact, there's a way that the enemy can see you coming as you burrow through the terrain. I'd say this is his second best role. Yes, second best. And that is because I think the changes actually make him a really strong top laner. Yes, I know I'm late to the party on this. It's taken me a long time to edit this. Leave me alone. His Q, his Q is a great tool, whether it's clear the wave to get some poke, clear from range, or fight your opponent. With both jungle and top, the best build path is going to be tank. Heart Steel is really good on him, but even with the tank build, I like to splash in a Titanic Hydra. Now, normally with the tank build, Skarner is better when it comes to scaling into the game with his maximum health scalings and the enemy max health scaling stuff, 
but this is where the runes can really make up for some stuff. Conqueror and Grasp of the Undying might seem like the go-tos, but actually, I found that Hail of Blades was the best rune on him. Using it with his Q makes you slam the hammer, I, I mean rock, really quickly, and actually, it makes it so your level 4 is really powerful. Continuing with the tank build, you still want to max your Q first, whether that is top or jungle. W is typically second, but you can make an argument for a second maxing your E if you're a jungle. I've even been seeing a lot of high elo players go Doran's ring W max in the top lane, even when they go for the tank build, just so they can have a lot of poke and really force out their competition in lane. Or if you want, you can place Garner mid. Yeah, Garner can play mid as well. If you remember, Scion mid was a thing as well, or Nautilus, or Cassante. Okay, maybe Garner's a continuing problem with tanks in mid lane. Lastly, if you play Support Scarter, you'll actually want to max your E first. I found it is really good when you're Support Scarter, but you can just slam the Q max path and it still works, honestly. Actually, now that I think about it a little bit more, I actually think W max might be better on Support Scarter, but I didn't test that, so take that as you will. All right, all that was just for Tank Scarter. That's the build path that Riot wants you to go, and it's easily the best. But it's not the only one you could go for. This is definitively the could part of the video. And if you try any of this in your own solo queue, not my fault. Anyways, let's talk about Lethality Scarner. With this, you have to go Hail of Blades. No exceptions. It is already the best one for sure on Skarner, as mentioned before, but it is the only option for Lethality Skarner. And you will kill people fast with this, but you'll die just as quick. Also, your ult kind of becomes a hindrance since it means you aren't attacking when you use it. Profane Hydra, Hubris, Yomus, all of these are options. There is no such thing as a static build and it should change based off your enemy team comp, but these are usually pretty solid. Your abilities will be the same order as tank, Qmax, Wmax, Emax, simple, throw another rock. All right, the next up, Full AP. Remember when I said that Seismic Bastion and Impale both do magic damage? Yeah, they do a lot of damage. Okay, not a lot of damage, but it's pretty funny. You're going to want both AP and a lot of ability haste. At least at the time of testing, when you max your W, it is on a really short cooldown. More ability haste means more shockwaves and more shields. So Cosmic Drive is fun. I preferred running Phase Rush personally, but as we talked about with Tank Skarner, people like running Arcane Comet there, and it could work here too. I just find it a bit boring, and it falls off late game. Well, actually, all of AP Skarner falls off late game. Same with Lethality too. Now that I think about it, the only thing that doesn't fall off is Hail of Anyways, I keep getting distracted. Um, there's another build that I didn't test out here that you could go if you want, and that's on hit. You, you could try it, I guess. Blade of the Ruined King, Wits End, all of that jazz. I really didn't try it mostly because I didn't have time. Go Lethal Tempo or stick to Halo Plates. Hell Conqueror can make a comeback with it. Q Max, W Max, E Max, you get the picture. It took me several games to feel comfortable with his Q. The wind up of picking up the rock is clunky at first. And the W can give you an auto attack reset, but. It is a very small window that you have. Same goes for the E. And the alt is going to be really tough at first. You will miss a lot of them when you first try him out. And not being able to flash while you're channeling that alt does kind of suck. All in all, I think he'll do just fine. It's enjoyable, even if I'll miss some of the aspects and the last remnants of Dominion and the Crystal Scar. Thank you for joining me back in the lab. I'll try to do more content like this with new champions in the future, as well as any future reworks. If you can, check out the Patreon. The more support I get there, the more videos I can work on. If I can make enough money on there, I can do this full time and I can even hire editors that can help me make more content. So this kind of content can come out more like once a week as opposed to once every two months. Thank you so much for all the Patreons that you see on the screen right now. And thank you for watching the video. I appreciate you just watching and getting this far. Like, subscribe, all that jazz, and until next time, goodbye.